Have you ever thought about how different your life would be if you hadn't made that one awful decision? Of course you have. We all have. Um, I picked this theory because I've always been fascinated by the nature of reality and how mysterious it is. Uh, I've always wanted to figure out how exactly the universe works and how we as a collective can benefit from that knowledge. Um, so if you want to find a solution to any problem, you have to have a basic understanding of the problem and what caused it. Similarly, uh, you must have a basic understanding of the nature of reality before you can effectively progress and solve problems within that reality. Uh, today I'll be talking about Hugh Everett's Many Worlds Theory um, that discusses the potentiality of parallel universes stemming from uh, our universe with every decision we make or don't make. Uh, to help you better understand this theory, uh, I'll take you through three steps. First, I'll explain the history and the influences of uh, the most important scientific discoveries of quantum mechanics. Secondly, I'll describe Niles Bohr's interpretation of quantum mechanics uh, and how he came to his conclusion. Uh, lastly, I'll describe the basis for Hugh Everett's Many Worlds Theory and how it uh, builds off of uh, Niles Bohr's interpretation. Uh, so the first step in understanding the theory is understanding where it came from. Uh, the theories of quantum mechanics were developed throughout the 1990s and uh, later into the 90s um, by a number of scientists, uh, Albert Einstein and Niles Bohr, to name a few, uh, and shifted our understanding of reality forever. Uh, Louise de Broglie's theory of wave-particle duality proposed that uh, there is no fundamental difference between uh, the makeup uh, and behavior of energy and matter, and that they can both behave uh, depending on the conditions like either particles or waves. Uh, this means that energy and matter at the subatomic level uh, have the same properties, meaning that all matter is made up of an, and made up entirely of energy particles and not physical part, part particles. So yeah, your entire body is made up of subatomic vortices of energy that are constantly spinning and vibrating. Uh, so building on these discoveries, uh, Werner Heisenberg posited that the measurement of two complementary values, such as position and momentum of a subatomic particle, uh, is impossible because the more precisely uh, one value is measured, the more flawed the measurement of the other value will be. Uh, so for example, picture a tank and a bicycle colliding with each other. Uh, although the tank is traveling at a much slower speed than the bicycle, the tank has a much greater mass, which means that the tank's momentum will increase much higher than that of the bicycle, uh, in effect forcing the bicycle in the opposite direction. Um, the final result of measuring an object's position leads to a change in the momentum. This means that you cannot find the position of a subatomic particle by measuring its counterpart uh, speed and momentum, and vice versa. Uh, this later became known as the uncertainty pr principle. Um, and these discoveries gave birth to two different interpretations of quantum mechanics, uh, Niles Bohr's uh, Copenhagen interpretation and Hugh Everett's Many Worlds interpretation. Um, so the next step in understanding uh, the Many Worlds theory is to understand Bohr's interpretation and how he came to that conclusion. Uh, so because of the difficulty of simultaneously measuring different properties uh, of subatomic particles, uh, Bohr asserted that a particle cannot be assumed to have certain properties or even to exist until it's measured. Uh, so this translates to a principle called superposition, which states that we, while we don't know what the state of any object is, it is actually in all possible states simultaneously until we measure it. So for example, say you take a living cat and put it next to a box. At this point, we know that the, the cat is dead, I mean, is alive, not dead. We know that it's alive. So then say you put the cat in the box and throw a capsule of cyanide in there and close the box. So at this point, we don't know if the cat uh, is, is alive and the, the capsule hasn't busted, or we don't know if the capsule is busted and killed the cat yet. So we don't know if it's dead or alive. Um, so um, since we don't know, the cat is in all possible states simultaneously, in this case, alive and dead. So it's only when we open the box that we see what condition the cat is in that we can measure it as dead or alive. Uh, so basically, Bohr is saying that um, particles are simultaneously nothing at all and everything until they are measured or perceived. So <clears throat> now we can come to a better understanding of the many worlds theory uh, and how it built off of this uh, Copenhagen theory. 
so Hugh Everett agreed with Bohr on most things, uh, uh, including the concept of superposition and the notion of wave functions, but disagreed with him on one very important point. Um, Everett's many worlds suppose that the measurement of a quantum object doesn't force it into one state or another, rather it causes a split in the universe of that object for every possible outcome of measurement. For example, if a physicist measures a particle, uh, there are two possible outcomes, either it will be a particle or a wave. When the physicist measures the particle, uh, the universe splits into two distinct universes uh, to accommodate each possible outcome. So the physicist in one reality measures it as a particle, while that same physicist in a different reality measures it as a wave. This theory implies that everything in the universe is made up of energy particles. Uh, and this splitting of universes is the case not only at the quantum level with subatomic particles, but at the physical level also, or, or the physical world where this computer and this phone and uh, this the, like stuff that we can see with the naked eye. Um, if every theory is correct, since each action we take has more than one possible outcome, uh, the universe will split to accommodate each possible outcome. This means that for every action you've taken in your life, uh, there may be multiple parallel universes where you took completely different uh, action and an endless amount of realities that stem from those different decisions in your other realities and so on and so on for example if you're in a terrible car crash uh where you could have easily died your reality is then split into two realities one where you survived and one where you died so that in the reality where you died that's the end of the game you're dead uh and in the reality where you're alive um you're still in the game but now for every action you take your reality continues to split into several other realities where you may have died in half of them and survived in the other half and it keeps going on like this so the main takeaway from all of this is that uh, you, right now you, if this theory is correct, of course, uh, are both dead and alive in multiple universes. But of course, in this one, you're alive uh, for now. So this is my explanation of Hugh Everett's Many Worlds theory through the description of quantum mechanics, uh, Niles Bohr's interpretation of quantum mechanics, and Hugh Everett's interpretation of Niles Bohr's interpretation of quantum mechanics. Thank you and good night.